Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Andrew Plays. As always, I'm your host Andrew Ambrose and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, we're going to be playing one of my favorite games for the Intellivision. And that's Burger Time. Burger Time was originally an arcade game made by the f kind folks at Data East, also known as Deco or Data East Company. Um, released into arcades in 1982. Um, in Japan, it was originally known as Hamburger, but they changed it to Burger Time for international uh, release. Um, and Mattel um, picked up the home rights for the game that same year, and, well, they made ports for multiple consoles, um, and, of course, their very own console, the Intellivision. Now, when it comes to Burger Time, this is probably my favorite way to play the game of the original Burger Time, not like any of the newer versions like Burger Time Deluxe on the Game Boy, which is very fantastic, and also Super Burger Time and Burger Time World Tour. I'm talking the orig in terms of the original, I think this is probably the best version of the original Burger Time ever, even better than the arcade version. Um, but, yeah. But overall, Burger Time is a fun game to play, and there are pretty some really good versions of it available for platforms like the ColecoVision, the MSX, um, and a few others. There is an NES version, though it's, from my recollection, not that good. It's alright, at best. But yeah, we're playing my favorite version of Burger Time, the Intellivision version. So, uh, let's get started. I got my, I got a, a Super Retrocade USB controller. And we're gonna get a move on. So, uh, first, like with any Intellivision game, we have to select certain things before we begin. In this case, it's just how many players. So I'll just hit one, and we'll begin. All right, so it's simple. You play as a chef guy. His name is Peter Pepper. You go around on these platforms and ladders, walking over these burger items and you drop them down in order to assemble burgers at the bottom. But you're also being pursued by evil um, food items that want to eat you. Um, uh, Mr. Hot Dog, Mr. Egg, Mr. Pickle. Um, they want nothing more than to catch you, so you gotta be careful not to get touched by them. And, well, that happened to me. But, yeah. Luckily, you're not um, defenseless, at least not all the time, at, at the very least. Um, you have um, pepper, a pepper shaker on you as a weapon. You can stun the enemies with the pepper shaker um, and get past them. They'll be stunned for a certain amount of time and you can get away from them. Problem is, you can only do it a certain amount of times before you run out of pepper. But you can regain pepper by collecting the food items that show up every so often, like uh, here, it's, in the first level, it's a can of french fries straight from a McDonald's restaurant or something. Ah, I finished the level before I got caught. And of course, the food items come out every after you kill a certain amount of enemies, so, yeah. And of course, the top strategy for scoring points in this game is to try to kill the enemies while um, dropping the food, either by dropping them as they walk onto the same um, item as you're walking off of, like here, like that, or you can um, go up to the top, wait for them to be right underneath you, and then uh, drop the thing so they'll get crushed as the burgers tumble down. Not only that, but you also get more points if you actually pepper them and then crush them with the food item. The thing I love about the Intellivision version of Burger Time is that, well, it's just so easy to move around. Like, it, it, the play, unlike the arcade version, um, you actually move a lot fast, you can actually traverse a lot more, um, ground, if that makes any sense, and well, also the stages aren't as big, so it's a lot more, uh, manageable to, uh, get, get all the way, um, through the uh, maze of ladders and platforms and assemble your burgers and of course I just died there but I'll start another game so uh 
and it's especially surprising how well the game controls considering this is a game for the Intellivision, a console that used a 360 uh, directional disc, a 360 degree disc that kind of swiveled around and was kind of odd for arcade style games like Burger Time, but the, the person who programmed this, I forget who his name was, he did a great job with making the controls work for the Intellivision version. And of course, I'm not even playing this with an Intellivision controller, so I'd be doing even better. But I've played this with an authentic Intellivision controller on a real Intellivision systems, and I can say, they did a great job on the controls. And well, honestly, I'm not, and well, it's fitting that this is not only my favorite version of Overtime, but one of my favorite games for the Intellivision, because this was actually the best-selling game for the Intellivision ever. Like, in its entire life, this sold more copies. This was the killer app for the Intellivision. That, that's how big this game was. This is on the same level of Ata the Atari 2600 Pac-Man, which was the best-selling game for the Atari 2600 or VCS. And well... Yeah, this game, that's how good this uh, version of Burger Time was, and how good this game is in general. As a matter of fact, because of the immense success of uh, the Intellivision Burger Time, um, they actually made a sequel to Burger Time. Um, not, not to, and I know Data East also made a sequel to Burger Time called Peter Pepper's Ice Cream Factory, but that's not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to the, the sequel that ma was made exclusively for the Intellivision. It was released in 1987, and it was called Diner, and well, I haven't played it that much yet, but it looks really fun, so I'd love to give it a try sometime, and hell, I might even do it on this uh, show. But, yeah, like, Burger Time truly was a game to be reckoned with back in the early 80s. And speaking of which, it seems that it was always Data East arcade games that made a huge killing on the Intellivision, because we had, not only did you have uh, Burger Time, but you also had, um, there was all, another popular game for Intellivision back then was Lock and Chase. That game was awesome on the Intellivision, and it was actually really popular, and that was also a Data East uh, arcade classic um, from back in the day. I think it was the sa released the same year as Burger Time, even. Um, but yeah, and not only that, but speaking of which, it really made me sad when I found out they didn't put uh, Burger Time on the Intellivision Flashback. I own the Intellivision Flashback from At Games. It's alright overall, it's got a really good selection of games, but they didn't bother seeking out the rights for the Data East games, um, especially Burger Time. It's especially hurt, painful considering how, since it was such a popular game, that they couldn't put it on there. Like, with the, like, with the, like, the ColecoVision flashback, one of the most popular games, like, the original ColecoVision, one of its most popular games was Donkey Kong, but it's understandable why they couldn't put it on the flashback, because, well, Donkey Kong is a Nintendo game, and, well, it's not very easy to get um, permission from Nintendo to use their games in other platforms besides their own nowadays. Uh, that's the, that's actually been that way for so many years. Um, but, with this, um, but, but with a game like Burger Time, that's from Data East, they could have easily been able to acquire the rights for that, um, from, uh, 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 who per I, I forget, who currently owns the Data East games? Uh, I'm trying to remember who currently owns the Data East games, because I think Data East no longer... Wait, does Data East still exist? Ah, uh, I forgot I ran out of pepper. But yeah, who who currently owns the who who currently owns the uh, the rights to the Data East um games? Is it Data East themselves? It's someone else. I for, I forget because even nowadays you can still find the old Data East games on modern consoles, um like the the Nintendo Switch and stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll start another game. 
Yeah, it really sucks that they didn't bother trying to get the rights for Burger Time, because that truly was one of the best, better games for the Intellivision, along with other such classics as Beauty and the Beast, Snafu, uh, Buzz Bomber, Astro Smash, Night Stalker, uh, uh, hell, they could have even, they could have even, could have even gotten Pac-Man on the Intellivision flashback. There was a pretty good version of Pac-Man on the Intellivision. It had a good, it had nice graphics, good controls, and, and the sounds were really pretty good. They were on par with the Atari 5200 Pac-Man, if I'm being perfectly honest. And, yeah, I'm surprised they couldn't have also went with Pac-Man, because it would, it would have been perfectly been within, um, at game's capability. But, I don't know, I guess the thought never came to their minds. I guess they, either that or they just wanted to uh, pay, pay more focused attention on uh, more original titles for the Intellivision. Hmm. You know, I've, in recent years, I've realized that Data East loves making games that would cater to an American audience. I mean, think about it. Like, you have, you have a game like Burger Time. Hamburgers are probably the most popular food in the United States. And while I should know, I li I've lived in the U.S. my entire life, and it's the food that I eat. I eat at least a hamburger every single day because, well, that's what we usually have in my house. And, well, it's something quick and easy to make, and easy to satisfy my hunger, but yeah, it's like, bur burgers are like, very popular in America, because well, they originated from there, and well, you see burger joints all over the place, you got places like McDonald's and stuff, and then you, uh, and then there are other games, like, you have, uh, Bad Dudes vs. Dragon Ninja, that's another Data East classic, that game takes place in the United States, and your, your goal in the game is to save President Ronald Reagan from the evil Dragon Ninja. That have kidnapped him. And, uh... Then we also... And there's also that uh, really shitty um, arcade game that Data East made in 86. I think it was called Express uh, Train. It, it was really horrible. Like, the graphics were ugly. The controls were awful. That game was probably one of the worst Data East has ever made. But yeah, it's, it's a western, it's a game based on the wild, wild west, and well, in the U.S., of course. So, yeah, there's that as well. Uh. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember, because I, because I thought about this a while ago, and I realized that Diddy East has such a fascination with the U.S. market. Uh, what's another game that's very American that Diddy East made? Ah, oh, fuck. I keep, I keep forgetting that I run out of pepper. It, it says on the bottom left, but I keep forgetting. I guess your mind just gets desperate and assumes the best when it's not so simple. Ah, nuts. Hmm. I'm still trying to think. I could remember, but yeah, I'm just drawing a blank here. Mm. Yeah, I ran out of pepper. It's gets harder in the later levels to manage against other guys without any pepper on your side, so you really gotta bob and weave around these guys. Ice cream! Ooh, 
ice cream. Give me the ice cream. Oh shit, I'm not gonna make it. Ah man. Ain't got no pepper. I say ain't a lot. I know it's not pro proper English, but I don't really care about that unless I'm, like, I'm writing something for school and I got killed. Well, yeah. 19,800 points. I think that's a pretty good score for this game. I'm sure there have been higher scores in like the hundred thousands or something. Unless it's one of those games where it stops at a certain score because of limitations or a bug. But, uh, yeah, that's in Television Burger Time, a very great home console port of an arcade classic. And honestly, you could I think it's even better than the arcade version, but I guess that's just me. But, yeah, truly is one of the greats for the Intellivision, and if you're out looking for Intellivision games, this is definitely one you can't pass up, because it's really a lot of fun. And if you're a big in a... A Western food, like hamburgers, I think you might have a fascination with this too. Not just hamburgers, but also eggs, uh, hot dogs, and pickles. Um, but, yeah, with all that said, I hope you enjoyed this episode of um, Andrew Plays today. And for hopefully next time we'll have even more fun as I take a look at another awesome retro game that is most likely obscure. Most likely something you never heard of, and hopefully we'll learn and probably try to find and play. But yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. As always, I'm your pal Andrew Ambrose, and I'll catch you later.